it wasn't fit in his first game against Fenerbahce. He was certainly, you know, he had, hadn't trained for about 30 odd days or something like that. That's one of the goals that, as I say, you look back on and you think, well, I don't epitomise what Wazza was about. It was explosive, and the ball just comes out of the sky and bang, back at the net. It's just a phenomenal finish. There's Rooney. Overhead kick! Oh, my word! I've never seen a goal like that in my life. Absolutely never seen a goal. And when you've got players like Wayne on the pitch, anything can happen. Finally gets his hands on the famous trophy. He makes history, United's greatest goal scorer. The EFL Cup belongs to Manchester United. United making Manchester proud. Well, first of all, pulling on the England shirt for one last time, what an amazing uh, moment it's going to be for you. Yeah, it'd be great, obviously, a proud moment. I've always been very proud to to play for England, so to have the opportunity to do it one last time will be, you know, a huge honour for me and something I'm going to enjoy, look forward to, and the minute I get on the pitch, um, <clears throat> I'm excited for. So, you know, it's a special moment and something I'm extremely proud of. Yeah, you must be proud, really, when you reflect on on your England career as a whole. Obviously, record goal scorer, you played in all the top competitions. Um, you know, must be proud to have that record for your country? Yeah, of course, and to have any record is always great. Um, but to have your, your record, obviously, for your country, um, which, not just a record, which you stood for so long, um, I think it was 40, 50 years, whatever it was, and to, to obviously get that record um, was something special, which um, I'll always remember. And um, So, but I think, um, obviously grateful to the FA for Given me the opportunity to have this this last game or part of the game, and um, almost of a way of saying, you know, thank you to the fans who, who were great with me, and um, obviously to try and raise money for the the children's charities which um, are involved in the game. Well, I was going to mention that because obviously a big part of this is the fact that money is being raised for your foundation. I mean, and some some great causes benefiting from this. Yeah, it is, and it's important. Um, you know, there's a lot of children who, who obviously need a lot of help in different aspects of life, and um, hopefully, the well, I know the money raised will help these these children. Whether it's poverty, whether it's um, illness, um, the money will help them a lot and help the families, which um, I felt was a great opportunity once I knew. Um, the game is going to go ahead. Um, I just felt it was a great opportunity to to try and do something which will help them also. I suppose it's great for your kids as well to see you in an England shirt. I suppose they, I mean, you know, some some are older than others, but it'd be great for them to see you in an England shirt as well. Yeah, um, my youngest boy, um, obviously he's never seen me play for England, so it'd be great to have my four children there and, um, you know, as a family to... So obviously to see, obviously he won't remember the game when he's older, but to get the pictures with them and um, that one last time. So um, it's something which I'm excited for, for to have my family there and um, be part of this game. You, you're coming into it after sadly going out of the playoffs in the MLS, but from, from washing from afar, it looks like you've had an absolute ball over there and it looks like it's been a real success for you. Yeah, um, the team done fantastic and um, Obviously, I went in um, to the team. We were bottom, bottom of the league, and um, we went on a great run and ended up finishing fourth. Um, which was to finish fourth from where we were. It was an incredible achievement by the team, and um, obviously went into the playoffs and lost on penalties. So, um, I think I said to the players before the game, actually, um, whatever happens in this game, um, we can be proud of our achievements. Um, Hopefully we go through before penalties, so whatever happens in the shootout, um, we can be extremely proud of what we've achieved because we had no right really to be in the position we we ended in. But it it, it gives us great momentum going into next season and um, great confidence and belief that we can obviously go further than what we have done this year. 
And be always confident that it was going to go well, because sometimes players have gone to the MLS, and it hasn't gone that well for Stephen Gerrard, for instance, it didn't go that well for, for him. And you're going to a new country, to a club where I guess you didn't, you're going into a dressing where you didn't really know the guys. I mean, were you always confident that it was going to go well? Obviously, as you say, I, I didn't know any of the players, um, so you need to make new bonds, um, new relationships um, with, with the players and, and the coaches. And um, Yeah, you don't know how it's going to go, you don't know how your teammates are going to take to you. Um, obviously, it could be difficult, um, there's a lot of things which are different there to what you're used to in the Premier League and um, the main thing, obviously, I think where I've grown up, I'm, I like to think I'm a really humble person and um, was to me to go in, embrace it, be part of the team, um, let the, the, the other players see that you know, I'm not coming in making big demands, I'm coming in as one of them and I think they all seen that and they were all really, all really pleased and happy to see that and um, yeah, I just fitted in really well and Really, from my first game, the performances, the the results were getting better and better, and I think that's full credit to the team with their um, attitude and, and belief as well. On that point of showing showing your teammates that you, you, you're one of them and, you, and you're mucking in, I mean, obviously we see see the goals here, and that was that classic one where you chased a, a lost course, put in a great tackle, ran back, crossed it, and they headed in for a last minute winner. Is that did that show everybody really? That you are one of them, you are mucking in. You're just not there for you're not, you're not there at the end of your career, if you like, just for, for 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 the end of your career. You're there to. No, I think I think maybe for more so for the fans um, that's shown that, but for the players, I think the players already seen that um, before that. Um, I think that was a obviously a turning point where the fans knew that I was there to work and play and try and help the team. But there was other, obviously other things which. There's things which are completely different. Um, you wash your own boots. You, when we go on away games, you carry um, the kit, the match kit, um, the medical um, equipment. There's things which is a lot different, and it would have been quite easy for me to, to say, no, I'm not doing that, I'm not used to doing that. But I think there's little things like that where you, you take part and you, you do your bit, which obviously um, everyone appreciates because um, if you don't, then you get seen to be a bit, you're a bit different and from the other players. When was the last time you did that? It must have been, um, must have been as a kid at Everton, I guess. Well, I actually had done it a few times at Man United <laughs> in my boots because the kit men, um, they couldn't clean, clean them properly. So, in particular, Alec Wiley and Ian Buckingham, they couldn't do it. So I had to do it myself a few times. We'll pass that on. Um, it seems also for the first time in London, it must be 15 years or so, you're actually having what most people would say is a normal life, because in DC, I suppose you're, you know, you're just another person in many ways. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think I've always had a normal life. Um, it's obviously the reaction to other people around you, which is in England, obviously um, a bit more difficult. And in Washington, you still get people um, coming up and you know asking how you are and wanting a picture, whatever. But it's not, it's obviously nowhere near the same as England and. Um, you can, as I've said before, you can, rather than me and Colleen making decisions of saying we'll take the children here after school and whatever, you can pick the children up and ask them where they want to go because you're not, you're not thinking, oh, there might be 200 people there and you won't get a chance to, you know, do the things you want to do with your children because of that. And so it's, um, no, it's great and it's something which I'm really enjoying. Family are there, all settled. Going to school, all that is there for the long, term, well, the longish term. Yeah, um, kids obviously all in school, um, all in school there, and um, yeah, we're, we're settling in. Obviously, um, still finding new things out there, um, still trying to get into the right routine for, for for ourselves, but we're getting there. Have you been following United from afar? Yeah, of course. Um, even last season when I was eleven, and you still follow. Um, United, something which I'll always do. Um, United was a, obviously the biggest part of my career, and um, I'll always follow them and, and want them to do well. And um, hopefully, um, we can start picking up results and, and get back on track. Are you still in touch with some 
former teammates or staff or whatever at, um, at United? Yeah, and um, obviously teammates, um, staff members there, um, the people who I shared um, a dressing room with and, um, and my life with for 13 years. So um, obviously made some great friends there and keep in touch and um, it's nice to speak to them and um, yeah, it's um, it's great to speak to them and hopefully over the Christmas period I'll get a chance to go and see everyone there and, and say hello. Obviously we're, as we speak, in, in eighth, which is not where we want to be and the aim is really to definitely finish in the top four. I mean, do, you, do you see United finishing in the top four? Certainly the talent's there to do it. Yeah, I think, I hope so. I think the the problem is the top the top six teams now anyone can finish in that top four and you just don't want to fall too far behind where it makes it you know really difficult to get in that top four so I think hopefully after this international break um, we can go on a run um, you know up to Christmas then throughout the Christmas Christmas period which will really as always in the Premier League that Christmas period determines how well or how not so well you're going to do in the, for the rest of the season. So I think it's an important four to six weeks um, for United to come around. Young with the cross. There's the header! Oh, it's a goal that could change the course of Manchester United season. A great ball across towards Rashford, surely. That is. That's the winner from Marcus Rashford. It's going to be Young. Who swings in and up goes for Len. He's got all the way through. Oh, it's gone in. Can what an incredible, that? an incredible turnaround. What we have seen is a, a fighting spirit at Bournemouth away, Juventus away, Newcastle at home, constant comebacks, late winners. So I suppose you can't question the spirit of the uh, the group. No, I think the spirit's obviously a big part of United's DNA and how many times have you seen us come back and, and win last minute um, last minute goals? I don't know if you saw the Juventus game last week, but do you think that ranks as one of our best group stage victories ever, maybe? A fantastic victory. Yeah, I think it, it has to. I think, um, in my opinion, Juventus are probably favourites to win the competition. Um, um, with San and Ronaldo, I think it makes them favourites. And um, to to win the way they did, I don't is that Juventus' first defeat yeah. at home? Yeah, is it? for a long time. For a long time, it's um, to win the way they did is it was an incredible result, and and then obviously the City game was was difficult to take. I think once it went to two one, I felt there was a bit of momentum, but just couldn't quite create that that next chance to to get the equaliser, but. I think we have to put that City game, the players have to put that City game behind them and look now and say you've got a group, a, you know, a block of games, we have to win these games. If they do that and then they can take it slowly by slowly and try and build back up the, the league. So the manager said he thinks the league will look rather different early in the new year with this massive run of games coming up in December. Would you agree with that? The table might look a little bit different? Yeah, I think it will and I think that's what I was saying. You have these games, it's important to take advantage of these games, you can either fall away, which will make it almost impossible to to get to where you want to be, or you can build momentum and you can, you know, keep closing that gap. And even if you close it to a point where you're putting a bit of pressure and you're making the leaders, you know, look back and think, oh, they're on a great run. It just builds that extra bit of pressure, which hopefully they can do that and and see where they go from there. I think Jose can do what I know he'll be doing, he'll be working with the team and setting them up. But I think a lot of responsibility has to be put on the players' shoulders. They, they go on the pitch, um, they have to take that responsibility and they have to thrive on it. And, and there will be tough moments um, throughout games. Um, that's where the big characters have to, have to lead by example on the pitch. And, and almost dragged the team through some games. And, you know, you've got players like Martial, um, Pogba, Rashford, who, who can, Lukaku, who can, when games aren't going well, they need to be the players who can just get that, that goal, which wins you the game. And um, 
almost calms everyone down. Rashford. Martial. Martial shot! Magic from Martial! Do you think he's now realising his potential? Do you think he's scored in the last sort of five league games? I think he's playing with confidence, um, which hasn't always been the case. I think it's been a difficult time for him, being in and out of the team. And um, I know with Anthony, if he's playing week in, week out, and playing well and scoring goals, he, he'll, his confidence will keep growing. And you know, to have a player like him in, in good form with confidence, he's you know he's got so much ability there that will certainly help the team. And Lukaku's having a, a rough trot in terms of goals, hasn't scored in 10 games now. I suppose at some point you would have gone on a goal drought. I don't remember you going on a goal drought like that, but I suppose you must have done. I suppose you know what he's going through. Is it a case of just getting one and then it'll all fall into place? I think the only thing I'd say, I've, I've been through a few. <laughs> when you're a bit younger, it's, it's a bit more difficult and you tend to try and do too much. Um, which isn't necessarily the right decision on the pitch at that time. The only thing I'd say is keep it simple. Um, you know, get the ball laid off, get in the box. Your chances will come. Um, and then once you start scoring, scoring more goals again, then you can you know get more involved in the game, do whatever. But just keep it simple, get in the box, and he'll score goals. Now, is Marcus somebody? I mean, we're here at St George's Park. Is he somebody you would catch up with here and have a chat about his progress? I mean, because he's only 21. And he's already done an extraordinary amount in there. Yeah, I think the first thing I done when I got here yesterday was was in um, the room with Marcus and Jesse, um, talking to them. And so, no, it's obviously the former teammate of mine, but I think also um, it's good for us to speak in um, in any way if I can help them. Then, um, of course, I will do. And um, and obviously, it was nice to see them as well. I guess you didn't. In the end, you didn't. I suppose you didn't really have an opportunity to sort of uh, say goodbye to United fans because after the Europa final in, in 2017, then then obviously you left that summer. Is it is sad in a way? Obviously, you had the testimonial the year before, but is it sad in a way that your career ended in that? Was it? it um, <clears throat> to be fair, I would have took um, going and winning and lifting the Europa League Cup um, as a your last game. But no, I know what you're saying. It would have been. Obviously, nice to have done it at Old Trafford, um, but I think um, there's there's plenty of time. I've been back there a few times, and um, I'll be back over the Christmas period at a game um, to watch them. And um, no, it's great. The, the fans give me a great reception every time I go back there, and um, and also they gave me a great reception when I went back with Everton um, in the game. So. That was that was a nice moment, um, but yeah, um, I had some great moments, um, and obviously the testimonial. So the fans um, have been brilliant to me, and um, it'll be nice to see a few familiar faces um, when I go to a game over Christmas. Did you miss it, or is it was it was it the right time to go? I mean, now, now you look back, I mean, of course you miss it. It's um, the highlight of my career. I was obviously playing for Man United, and um, was there for so long. Um, but it was the right time um, I weren't playing, um, first of all, so I've always been a player who wants to play and obviously I spoke to, to the manager and it didn't look like I was going to play, so it was the right decision, right time I think for me to go and um, obviously you wish the ideal situation would have been you stay there and you, you finish your career there, but football changes. Um, Different things happen, and things happen for a reason. And um, I left with great memories, and um, so um, and a new opportunity, obviously now to go and play in the states. So um, yeah, I had a great time there. Um, and as a, again, I'm just looking forward to go back and seeing a few of the, my teammates, um, a few friends of the staff who have made over the way. There's Rooney, overhead kick. Oh! That's amazing! That's sensational! I just can't believe what I've seen! Only Wayne Rooney can produce a piece of genius like that! 559 appearances, 253 goals a record. Uh, have you still got more to do in your career? But overall, I mean, that, you know, could you imagine that when you turned up? No, in not, not when I first signed, but 
Yeah, obviously the closer you get, the, the more you believe it, you, you're going to do it. And when I finally got the record, it was a, a great moment for me um, to get the record, I think. Obviously, again, a record which had stood for so long with Bobby Charlton, so um, it was a special moment as, as well. And um, to be Man United, um, biggest club in, in England, um, one of, if not the biggest club in, in world football, to to be the record goal scorer for that that club is something I'm extremely proud of. Rooney swings it in. Oh, it's gone in! Wayne Rooney, that's the record. He makes history. 250. Wayne Rooney, United's greatest goal scorer. Manchester United are once again champions of England, champions of Europe for a third time. Wayne Rooney finally gets his hands on the famous trophy. Are you the sort of person who has a look at all those medals now and then, like 12 major trophies, or do you just leave them um, to one side? And <laughs> yeah, not really. I, I actually can't remember the last time I looked at them, uh, to be honest. Um, it's something which extremely proud to have achieved and um, it actually gave me an idea to do a picture with my kids, uh, me and the four kids with one on each um, Premier League one but um, no it's I think as a player when you're still playing you, you're you almost in a different mode where you're just concentrating on playing and you're not really looking back at what you've achieved and I suppose that'll come more um, when I do actually retire from playing. And when you do in the end, have you got any thought about coaching? Like Michael Carrick's the assistant at the moment, Giggs, he's manager of Wales, your former teammates are... you got any thoughts about that in the future, coaching? Or? Yeah, um, something I'm passionate about, I want to do. Um, and obviously need to complete my badges, which um, obviously I'm, I'm doing over in the States. And hopefully by the time I come back to England, I'll have them complete and be in a position to to accept or reject whatever offers um, again. Not TV then, not not, not, <laughs> yeah. not like Scalzi or, or the No, I think there's the... always time yeah. to I think you've got time to to do TV if you, if that's the way you want to go and um I think everyone's different. I'd prefer to give the coaching or management a go. If it doesn't doesn't work out then I'm sure there'll be opportunities with, with T V to do whatever. Um, you feel it's right for you.